study my name's d this is my wife millie so if you like what you see subscribe and hit the notification bell and if you wish to reach out to us you can email us at devoted to ya at gmail.com let's continue jude verse 21 there's only one chapter in jude verse 21 it says keep yourselves in the love of god it wouldn't say keep if it was a one-time thing. Christ, a lot of Christians, and, and there's certain Israelites, Messianics, who preach, once saved, always saved. And that's a false doctrine. Dangerous. Very dangerous. And that's another doctrine that keeps people bound in sin. Those are the type, those are the type of doctrines that keep, like you look at somebody's lifestyle and you're like, wow, that guy, is, that guy needs to be a believer. He's, he needs to be born again. And then you talk to him, he's like, oh yeah, I've been a Christian my whole life. God's never left me. What? Those are the type of people who live like sinners. And you, you can't tell the difference between them and worldly people. And they, out of their mouths, they say, oh, yeah, I've always been a Christian. I've always been a believer. God's always been on my side. What do you mean? But you're living like a devil. It's because that person has a belief, and they've been taught by a preacher and a pastor on a pulpit that once you believe in Jesus Christ, you're saved, and you're never going to be unsaved. You will always be saved no matter what you do in your life. God will always be your father. And they like to, they like to twist truth. They like to twist things. They'll do things like when you have a son, he's part of your DNA. You can't reverse that. He will always be your son. So they like, to, they like to say that. So when somebody else is born again, spiritually, they can't be unborn again. They like to twist they like to twist stuff. That sounds good, right? That's like, wow, oh, shoot, that makes sense. Oh, my goodness. But they, they, miss, they, 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 they dismiss all the scriptures that actually prove that you can be, that you can fall away from the faith, that you can return like a dog, return to your vomit, that you can be erased out of the book of life. Or there are some people who will not, like Jude 21 says, who won't keep themselves in the love of God. So if you don't keep yourselves in the love of God, what can you expect? But Jude understands the importance of enduring and fighting. So he tells his audience, keep yourselves in the love of God. You guys are doing good right now. You guys are in. Your family, we're brothers and sisters. We're born again by God's mercy. He's delivered us. And and forgiven us for our sins, right? Stay in this. Stay in his love. Looking for the mercy of our Lord, Yahushua, the Messiah, unto eternal life. There's going to be a lot of folk who are going to be thrown into the lake of fire who we thought were saved. There's going to be folk saying, haven't we done miracles in your name and cast out devils and prophesied in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. And it's going to be those who even knew the true name of the Messiah, too, because that's really what that passage is talking about. Pe people who actually knew the Hebrew and legit name of the Messiah, and still he's going to be throwing them. So don't think that knowing the right pronunciation of the Messiah's name is a, t a free ticket for you to live nasty, <laughs> thinking you're going to get into the kingdom. Wasn't there a scripture saying, like, if we blaspheme his name just by the way we live, if we yes. claim to be followers? Yes, I believe in the Tanakh, in the older yeah. writings, there's definitely a passage that says it just like that. I remember I read that and my wife, either my wife read it to me or we read it to each other. I forgot. I think she read it to me, but she's like, babe, look, the only way to blaspheme is not just by having the wrong pronunciation. It's actually by the way you live. Yeah. She showed me the scripture. I was like, oh, snap. Nice. Good catch. Great catch. I think what is when when you were reading earlier with the idea of First Thessalonians five twenty three when it says, um, "and be a body preserved blameless." 
just the thought that's coming to me is a lot of people like the thought and the ideology of being preserved blameless. They like to hold that captive in, in their mind, but without the work, right? So coming back to Isaiah um, 16, because they want to define, oh, wrong thing. They want to define work differently, right? We want to make it into our own terms. But Isaiah 16, it says, wash yourselves, right? There's a command for you to do something. Make yourselves clean. That's something that you need to do, which you've been, which you've been noting. I'll put that down. Um, put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. These are things that we have to do. It takes, it takes work. So while people have the ideology of being preserved in Messiah, especially those that first come to the faith, I think they're just sprung up. Um, but they have no root, like the parable that talks about, they, they, they spring up in the, this excitement, but when the temptations and the trials of this world come along, because they have no root, root within the Messiah, it's, it's, it's pretty much gone. The gospel's gone from them. But that thought, I already received it, still lasts within them. So now they're living out unrooted, but have this ideology that they are because they don't want to actually do the work to be clean. And I see many people you know, who proclaim God. And, and one thing that, that actually I'm very fearful for people is when they do receive quote unquote blessings and their work's going well, or they're becoming entrepreneurs or they're doing this and that. I mean, that you look and they are busy. They are busy with the thing. They, I'm ball and shot calling, right? Ball and shot calling. They're busy doing things and, and they'll go and they'll give glory to God. Praise you who afford that because God deserves all the glory. But it's actually a masquerade that they're li literally deceiving themselves because they don't realize that, yes, you can have all these blessings because Yahuwah reigns on the just and the unjust. So while they're walking unjustly and they're receiving this reign, they're giving praise to Yahuwah, but their, their lives don't fit um, a righteous lifestyle. And yet they twist it. And so it's, again, that name it, claim it type of thing. I see that a lot. Or, um, you know, I'm doing my thing and God's blessing me and God bless you and God bless this. But it's just this false sense of security. And I think it's, again, it comes with, especially churchgoers, and I've seen people that grow up in church and hold this, I have this preservation in my mind and, and, and I've accepted the Messiah previously, but I don't need to continue walking in. And they won't say that. And that's, and that's where you know, those of us who are walking in truth and can call a spade a spade and sin sin, we have to be able to express that to them in hopes that they will come out from the burning fire realizing you are on fire. And then I don't mean the good way. I don't mean mm -hmm. in the spirit and, and you have a, you know, a shot up in your bone and the word shot up in your bone. I don't mean that type of fire. I mean, you are literally running yourself into the lake of fire and you need to come out. Would that also go with the parable of the foundations? Having your seed, where is your seed planted in? Yeah, it's moments like this when we're preaching and all hyped that I think of things I could say to people. <laughs> so, you know, when people are like, oh, yeah, God is good. He's blessing me. I, like, I almost want to come up with a response. We're like, oh, yeah. Well, how's your life? How's your walk? Have you offended anybody that you haven't repented and, and, and reconciled with? Are you living in any kind of sin? Is there any sin that you're not dealing with in your life? And then you're going to get those, those slick, sleepy, slippery, sloppy grace Christians that are going to respond. Oh, brother, I, I, I sin every day, brother. I sin every day. I'm a sinner. I, oh, woe, woe be unto you then. I mean, my goodness gracious. What sin, what's the last sin you committed that you haven't repented of? Let's, let's deal with it right now. Oh, that's none of your business, brother. Oh, now it's none of my business. Oh, but you want to say God, God is blessing you and doing all this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. But you got sin that you don't want to confess and repent of. Oh, okay. Now I know what kind of God you serve. Now I know what now now I know now I know where you at. You know what I'm saying? Yo, people get mad offended. But really get real with people and see how quickly they get upset and how, how quickly that happy smile goes away. You know, that fake smile, fake love of Jesus stuff goes away. Are you currently in sin? No, you're not. Okay, can I challenge you on that? <laughs> <laughs> Are you keeping the Sabbath day? <laughs> right. uh, part of me just thinking, I, for some reason, part, this doesn't go for all, but I would think for most of us that are walking in the faith, the word wouldn't be offensive unless we love our sin, right? Like if, you're, like if you have those moments as a believer where you're in sin 
and Yahuwah needs to do some whipping to you, you know, then the word's offensive because you're, you're getting hurt and chastised. But I, I, I think about this. I was writing on someone's post about, you know, homosexuality and sexual morality and everything and it being sin. I was calling sin out. And the person was like, oh, love is love. And, and you need to pray for yourself. They were trying to be offensive to me, saying I need to pray for myself. And, you know, I responded. I said, I do pray for myself. I pray that I do not walk in sexual morality. I, I, I used to, like, because the truth in praying for yourself is a truth. I should be praying for myself before Yahuwah. So I shouldn't be offended at that. But when you know the spirit and the heart behind someone through discernment, you can say, okay, well, I see what you're saying. Let, I'm bring you to the word because what you're saying is true, but you need to apply it to yourself. You need right. to walk righteously yourself. Love is not, you know, this, God is love. People love to say that. God is love. Yes, he is. And have you read how he defines it? For those who love him will obey his commandments. Do you know what his commands are? Like when you get into it and, and you start teasing these apart and it's, it's not a matter of trying to be above someone in this con condemning way, but rather our ultimate goal is to see people in the kingdom, right? And so people would take our love and mistake it for hatred when it's in reverse. Their, their love for the things of the world is actually hate, the things that God hates. So one to those who call evil good and good evil, but I'm getting... Also, there's a, in Psalms or Proverbs about a strong hand, fist or something. You guys know what I'm talking about. It's better to have a strong you know, fist come upon you than a lighted. I can't, I'm just, I'm butchering it, but instead of someone sweet talking, it's better to have someone who like, you know, tells you how it is pretty much. How to find I it. If it's the one that I said earlier, it says the wounds of a friend are better than the kisses of an enemy. If yeah, it's enemy. pretty much close to that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also wanted to say, if I could uh, read a scripture. Go ahead. Got a few of them. Uh, Exodus 31, 13. Where it says, say, say to the people of Israel, you shall keep my Sabbath, for this is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I, Yahuwah, sanctify you. Now, a Christian can say, well, that's says people of Israel. Well, what about the Ten Commandments? Is it not in the Ten Commandments, right? Keep my Sabbath. So, and then I have Ephesians. Oh, did you read Ephesians chapter 5? I feel like I did. Scroll up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, we did. About the okay. wife and all that. That's also yeah, love your me. wife. Yeah, it's Messiah love. Yeah, yeah, but to me, it also is sanctified, but it also tells me the bride, as, as us being the bride in Messiah, he, you know, he did what he did so he can have his bride, and that's us. That's right. Amen.